What's up, fam? Welcome back to the What's Good Podcast. Y'all, I want to do a short intro for who we have coming up because I am so excited that we have Louis Giglio on the Well That's Good Podcast. And I'm just going to go ahead and say, this podcast is incredible and he has so much good advice, but you do not want to miss the end of this podcast. So stay tuned for the very end because we have a big announcement and some good news to share with all of you. Also, if you aren't familiar with Louis, you probably are. He has so many good resources out there. So many great things, but his newest stuff is he has Goliath Must Fall, which is an incredible book, but he has it now for young readers too. So you should go check that out. It says this get ready to live free. The same God who was with David can help you today because Goliath must fall. Everybody needs that message. Also, they have an Advent devotional book that is the same content that they've done before. So it's not completely new, but it's all new designs. So get that. It's called Waiting Here for You. With all that to say, I cannot wait for us to have this incredible conversation with Louis Giglio. Are you ready for the question of the Whoa That's Good podcast? I hope so. I think I'm ready. (laughs) <laughs> okay. What is the best piece of advice that you have ever been given? You know, the uh, I was thinking all the way back to different pieces of advice. The best one, Sadie, was uh, it's two words. Are you ready for this? Ready. And uh, actually, three words. <laughs> then be one. Now wow. I have to I have to back up and explain a little bit. Um, I heard about this guy named John Piper like 25 years ago. And I started reading one of his books, Let the Nations Be Glad. It was blowing my mind, uh, reading Piper books, take some concentration. And I thought, man, this guy's got a lot to say. But I showed up a little bit later at a conference that I was speaking at in sort of like the lower level speaking uh, zone, and he was the main speaker. Hmm. And I can see the seat I was sitting in right now. He gave his heartbeat message about Mm. uh, it all being about God's glory and why that's the best thing for all of us. I barely could breathe. I don't think I breathed during the message. (laughs) And I was riveted not only by what God was saying to me, but how I knew it was just going to change everything about my life. And we left that session, went up to this uh, sort of what would look like a fellowship hall for any church-type people. for lunch, and I was just over the table, and Piper was up at the head table, and he was sitting by himself, and the other guys hadn't come to the table yet. So it was just John Piper sitting there eating, and I'm over at another table with some guys, and I'm like, I don't ever go talk to people. I don't ever bother <laughs> people, but I'm going to go tell John Piper something. And so I, you know, got up my nerve, walked over there, and I said, Dr. Piper, um, I'm, my name is Louie. I'm one of the other speakers here. And I just wanted to tell you that I haven't heard anyone speak like you just spoke. I said, I haven't heard but five people in my lifetime speak like you just spoke. Hmm. And he looked up at me, he had green beans on his fork. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And he looked up at me as only John Piper could. And he said, well, then be one. Wow. And then there'll be six of us. That's cool. That is so I cool. I kind of snuck back over to my table. And was like, <laughs> I am such an idiot. And I don't know why I went to talk to John Piper. But mm. it stayed with me. And it's great advice because, you know, we all look up to somebody. We all admire somebody. We all want to be something. And I think the when you just flip it around, this, the best advice is... Do what it takes to be that then. If that's really the vision you have for your life, then don't just tell that person that you are really touched by what they did. Commit yourself to being that person. And Mm -hmm. it really did set me on a kind of awkward trajectory, but it is (laughs) some of the best advice I've ever gotten in my life. I love that. That's so good. Oh, man, I hear that all the time. People come up to me and they say, you know, I want to be you. I want to be just like you. I want to do what you're doing. And so that, that's such good advice, especially for people who even come to conferences that you do, like the Passion Conference. Like, 
the I know the last thing you would want is for somebody to leave and say, I want to be Louis Giglio or I want to be Sadie Rowe. You want them to say, I want to be more like Jesus and go out and live that life. And so I think that is such good advice. In short, we can all remember that, then be one. Um, I do want to talk to you about the Passion Conference because obviously so many college students have been impacted that by that. Um, one question I just have for you is why college students? Why uh, do you and Shelly pour your heart out to the 18 to 25 year old person? You know, Sadie, I set out to love God and to serve Him, and I never thought about being in college ministry. I ended up, super short story, being a summer college intern while I was in grad school at seminary. And the first summer, I ended up at this church being a college intern for the summer. Never done college ministry, really wasn't on my radar. But I ended up doing that the next couple of summers, and while I was doing it, I started dating Shelly. She was at Baylor. Mm -hmm. I started spending my weekends at Baylor, and I went to an urban campus, um, and so I went to kind of college at home. We called it 13th grade growing up (laughs) in Atlanta, Georgia. I went to Georgia State University. There was no on-campus living at the time. So I didn't really get that college experience, and now I'm spending weekends in Waco, sleeping on guys' couches and sleeping on guys' floors because I'm dating Shelly, and uh, (laughs) I'm learning, oh, this is how college works. And in the summers, I'm pouring into these college kids during these summer college internships, and I realized in that moment, the main thing that pushed us over the edge, Sadie, was realizing two things. Number one, a lot of followers of Jesus, so... Um, a lot of people I know listening today aren't haven't made that decision and maybe don't have a big faith component, but for a lot of Christians, church people, I saw them in their church summer college intern world, and then I saw them the moment they hit the campus, and they were two completely different people. Yeah. And I realized this window, this 18 to 25-year-old window, it's where people make the decisions that shape the rest of their life. They meet their wife, they get their friend group, they get a trajectory going for their world. And and it's where people decide, is this my parents' faith or is this my faith? And we have to work that out. Secondly, if you saw the movie about Facebook and you go back to Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook runs the world, by the way, and it runs the world because it, it went crazy on a college campus. And mm-hmm. the campus is an incredible incubator for all kinds of things. And if the gospel is that thing, then the college campus, I believe, can possibly be the best place on planet Earth for the gospel to change the world. So great. Come on, everybody who's listening, I want you to hear that. That is Louis Giglio saying that the college campus can be the greatest place to spread the gospel. And I think, you know, sometimes we get intimidated by the stereotype that college students have, or maybe that you have as a college student, but be that person to break that stereotype. All it takes is preaching the gospel. All it takes is the power of Jesus to see people go from death to life. That that literally is all it takes is just living it out. And so, Louis, it, it means so much, you know, that you guys believe in that 18 to 25 year old age group so much, clearly because I am in that age group. And I think about the fact that y'all started Passion and even before that, y'all were doing college ministry, you were doing ministry in general, but you started it before I was even born. And now you're welcoming welcoming us like me and others into it and you believe in that next generation and so what is the importance for you that you're kind of setting up the next generation um, to win and to be you know outspoken for the gospel I think it's just that viewpoint Sadie that you know you can you drive by these churches all the time that you see that there are more people in the cemetery of the church than you could possibly fit in the church Mm. And there's one of those uh, used to be on the street at uh, the road that Shelly and I lived on. Uh, we don't live on that road now, but we saw it every day. And I would drive by it, and I'd be like, you could only fit 128 people in that church. Mm. But yet, it looks like there's about 528 people in the cemetery next door. <laughs> and so, you have to have a view to the future. The gospel is always future. Jesus died on Friday, but the story really hit its peak on Sunday. Yep. Uh, Jesus was raised from the dead, but, you know, Pentecost came, and by that time, He'd already ascended back into heaven. He ascended into heaven and said, I'm going to come and set my foot back down on this mountain. And so, we're all waiting for that moment. So, the gospel is future forward. 
And so leaders have to be that way. And frankly, I just am energized by the, that moment, that, that convergence of the 20 years, the 30 year window where people have all the possibility in front of them. And my friends are talking about retiring and what they're going to do, you know, in the last chapter of their life. And I'm like, that is so uninspiring to me. I want to be around yeah. people who are looking to the future. And Sadie, you are the future. Mm-hmm. And so the way a lot of leaders say it is that you, you look through people. Mm -hmm. So you don't look to somebody, oh, you're going to be the person. You're always looking through that person, not like they're not important, but Mm -hmm. who's the next person and who's the person after them. And that's what Jesus was doing. He was looking at his followers, but he didn't just look to the 12. He looked through the 12. And when Mm -hmm. he looked through the 12, he could see me. And so when he was mm-hmm. preaching to them, he was always including me and those who will come after you. That was me. And yeah. so uh, I think it's that's what keeps us going and keep us focused on on the young generation, the next generation, if you will. Yep. So good. I just encourage, you know, young people, I know for the most part, that's the majority of listeners, you know, I think we want the older generation to believe in us so much, but I encourage you, believe in the older generation too. I was having a conversation with people the other day and they're in Gen Z, you know, my generation, yeah. and they, they were just kind of struggling, wanting to listen to wisdom from older generations saying they couldn't understand what we go through. You know, they, they didn't have the social media back <laughs> and the whole thing. And I'm like, yeah, they might not understand that element of your life, but on a heart level, they do. They've gone through all the same feelings you're going through and you need their wisdom. And I always think that like when wisdom and when that younger zeal joins together, you see these powerful things happen. And so we need that collaboration. And I just love that you've welcomed me to the table and so many other young people. Um, Speaking of young people though, I know what every young person loves to hear about is relationships. And you kind of mentioned you and Shelly, y'all's dating years and all of those things. Um, Today, actually, when the podcast is going live, there's this is me and Christian's one year anniversary. Yeah. And Are you kidding what? me? <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Yes. So one year ago, you were actually um, the pastor at our wedding. And I thought it was so special that you happened to be on the podcast today. Um, But I want to talk about dating well, you know, and ask you if you feel like in how you and Shelly dated, did it set you up well for how y'all's marriage is today. And if not, that's okay. Honestly, you can say, no, our dating wasn't great. We've learned a lot in marriage. Or do you think there were elements to how y'all dated that that set you up well to have a good marriage? Yeah, well, A, congratulations. And your wedding was Thanks. absolutely like out of this world. <laughs> Thank you. got you. married on a tennis court for those people who don't know. But man, you would have never known there was a tennis court under there. And it was such a special night when you have people come literally from around the world to celebrate you guys. And can I just share one thing real super quick? So Please I think there do. was a delay. We were waiting on the shuttle buses or something was taking longer and there was like a little gap of time and <laughs> Christian was super nervous. He was uh, <laughs> pacing around and it was just me and him. All y'all were up at the tennis court and the little house behind the tennis court and Christian and I were standing in the kitchen and I was like, man... I don't know if Christian's going to make it. He's awesome. I know he's going to make it. But you know what I'm saying. It was just like, yes. he was he was nervous. But just so happens, your dad has a golf hole right out in your backyard. And so I went rummaging around. I said, Christian, where does Willie keep his golf cl- clubs? And he goes, like, in here. So we're in there digging out golf balls and golf clubs. And then there's Christian and me outside your house, <laughs> chipping balls up onto this green. And neither one of us were yes. doing very good. But it was so <laughs> awesome, and it was one of my favorite moments of life. It just kind of let all the the air out of the space. And I think in oh. the dating zone, Sadie, that the thing that's most important, I think, in dating is that you establish your purpose. And yep. you you decide when you're dating who are we and what are we going to be so that by the time Shelley and I stood up on the platform in the old sanctuary at Second Baptist Church Houston and said, we do— we were committed to living our lives for Jesus. We didn't know mm. what that looked like, where it was going to take us. We didn't know the details. We just knew we had been worshiping together. We've been singing at the praise songs at the top of our lungs, right in the car together. We have been memorizing God's Word together. 
We have been in ministry together. And we we did long distance dating for a couple of years. And so we fought that fa- fight and um, survived, which I think is a good thing. I think that just strengthens <laughs> relationships sometimes. But we knew what our purpose was. And so a lot of people date just wasting time. It's like, what are we doing this weekend? And what are we doing next weekend? And you want to go to the lake and you want to do this instead of going, what is life about? And what is our life about? And let's start doing that now. If we believe we're going to make an impact in the world for Jesus, let's start doing that now. Or yep. say you're out in business. We want to build a business. Okay, let's start working on a business together, or let's start serving the community together. Yep. And that way, once you get married, it's not like, oh, now we're married. Now we start our life. It's no, now we're married. We just continue our life. That's so good. Establish your purpose. I love that. And um, it's funny you mentioned the the golfing moment because that was definitely one of Christian's favorite moments of of he he actually just is on the other side of the room. He said of my life. I was going to say <laughs> of the wedding and one of his favorite moments of his life because yes he was so nervous and that just brought him back to the moment. But you even mentioned earlier when we were talking about me and Christian's mission statement for our relationship and I can think back to when we were dating and. You know, we were constantly thinking of what our purpose is, what our mission is while we're dating. And those little taglines or those things that we're both going for, the desires of our hearts, talking those out together were super important so that we, when we get married, we could, you know, hit the ground running and with those things that we had already talked about and prayed about and all those things. And, and if you are married and, and you haven't ever done that, now's a, now's a great time to start, you know, making your marriage have purpose and have vision and mission. Yeah, I think so many people, Sadie, they think all you need is love, and that's just so not true. You know, life isn't about let's just be in love. Life is about we were created for a purpose, and we were put on earth for a purpose. We all are breathing air for a reason, and every family needs a purpose. great. And it starts with that couple. So I... I just would take a step back tonight if uh, or today or whenever you're listening to this podcast, if you're in a relationship and just say, hey, what is our mm-hmm. purpose? And why do we why are we better together than we are apart? And what does God want to do through our lives? And I think once you know that, um, it gives you uh, some ballast in your boat. It gives you some direction because every couple is going to face headwind. There's going to be hard times in every relationship, mm-hmm. but the purpose is what sort of guides you through all of yep, that. Yeah, so good. Um, I don't know one thing that you talk about publicly is anxiety, and you talk about that, and Goliath must fall, and I feel like we couldn't do a podcast and not touch on it because both of us have struggled with just the grip of anxiety. And I know this year, especially in the midst of covid it has sparked, you know, a lot of people who maybe haven't ever struggled or those who've struggled for a long time for it to be even heavier of a grip. And so just honestly, I have nothing else to say, but just can you give some advice to the person who is walking in the midst of that really dark struggle of anxiety right now? This is going to sound simplistic, Sadie, but you know I've been down in a deep, deep hole of depression, and so nothing I say is simplistic. I take mental illness, depression, anxiety super serious. It can take you out, but at the same time, you're going to make it. That's what I want to say to that person. Mm -hmm. You're hearing voices telling you you're not going to make it, but those are not coming from your creator. They're not coming from your maker. They're not coming from your shepherd who said, I'm going to lead you through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm not going to drop you off somewhere. I'm going with you all the way through it. And and when I was in that deep hole, the thing I had to fight against and that God gave me the grace to overcome in in an amazing way was that I I didn't think I was going to make it. And I think once you believe that long enough, you finally succumb to that, and then you don't make it. Mm -hmm. And so it's just writing a simple statement today, I'm going to make it. Uh, I, today, we're recording this podcast on your anniversary, and this is a day in the year, and we made it. This yeah. is um, a time of, this is November, and we made it. Yeah. We made it. You're going to make it. You may feel like there's a thousand pounds on you today. You may feel like it. it's dark and hopeless, but you're going to make it. You are going to great. make it. And I think when you start changing your own personal narrative, like, I don't feel better. I don't feel different. I'm not talking about simple solutions, Sadie, a Band-Aid, a one-size-fits-all. I'm just talking about changing your narrative. 
and just saying, you know what, today is the hardest day of my life, but I am going to make it. End of statement. And something about that lets a little bit of light in. And the other thing, and I've said this before, and people can hear this on a message I gave called, I'm not okay, but Jesus is. That little sentence, (laughs) I'm not doing good right now, but Jesus is doing okay. Jesus is not suffering depression. He doesn't need medication. He doesn't need counseling, and He's here with me right now. So I do need some of those things. I need help. I need a doctor. I need a friend. I need light. I need freedom. But Jesus is right here with me, and He's okay. And if we can be open about that and not fake it till you make it, you can't do that with depression. You have to face it. You have to be honest. You have to speak it out. You have to be vulnerable and transparent and let the light in. But I would just encourage you, change that little simple narrative today. You are going to make it. You made it this far, and you're going to make it. That's great. That's great. I know that's so needed for so many people to hear. And if you're listening and you're like, I need more of that, I highly suggest going to listen to I'm Not Okay, But Jesus Is. That was one of my favorite messages that you've preached. And I, I love several, but that one was so impactful. And then also, like I said, his book, Goliath Must Fall. I know you talk about just that battle and I have Live Fearless out too. So if you need more resources, we put them out there and I'd love for you to go dive more into that. Um, So good. I know despite, you know, talking about you walking through depression, and anxiety, one of the things just being up close in your years and Shelly's life, something that you can't miss when you talk to y'all is y'all live on incredible faith. I mean, people don't realize when they're at the Passion Conference how much of it y'all were actually just completely dependent on God to show up and do, and God shows up and does it. And so how do you encourage someone to live in that place of dependency on God uh, to increase their, their faith? Well, you know, you don't start by doing an event at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. That's not (laughs) how you build your faith. You start by uh, taking one step, and you take a small step and trust God, and you do that with the counsel of people around you. You don't just haul off one day and say, I believe the Lord told me to go do X, Y, and Z, so I'm going to go trust God. You, You humble yourself to the people around you. You discern what God's saying for you to do. And you take a step. And what you learn is sometimes you get it wrong, um, but a lot of times you get it right, and then you see God come through. And it's like building up the calluses on the end of your finger or building a muscle or a muscle memory. You, You do that again, and God comes through. Then you do that again, and God comes through. And eventually, you're standing in front of this giant mountain, and you go, God's gonna come through. And people are like, how can you have that kind of faith? And you're like, I don't know. I don't know how I can have that kind of faith. I just kept taking little steps with God. And our passion story, you know, people say, oh, y'all are the biggest thing going, and you just say passion, and all these people show up, and they have no idea how much work it takes and how much faith it takes and how every year we need multiple miracles to happen. I mean, to get that flame from Jerusalem to Mercedes-Benz Stadium, there there were a hundred miracles that happened on that journey, and that was just one part of Passion 2020. And so, Take the little step, but do it with wise people around you, and you don't have to haul off and raise the dead. Just take the little step and say, God, I'm going to trust you with this, and then I'm going to see you come through, and then take the next step after that, and you end up, you know— at some pretty big mountains. And when you do, you're not intimidated by the size of the mountain because you've already gotten to know the size of your God. Come on. That's so good. I love that. I actually, just last week on the podcast, we were talking with Carrie Jove, and she was talking about how right before Passion, they were praying that the wind of God would just come in. It would come in like a (laughs) mighty rushing wind. People would feel it on their faces. And then, of course, in that moment, the top of the Mercedes-Benz Stadium opens up, which was not planned, and the way that the wind formed, I mean, it was like a mighty rushing wind in the place. And so we were just talking about that moment, and it was so cool. Um, Speaking of passion, I know so many people have been so disappointed that there is not going to be a Passion 2021 this year. But we have some good news to share with everybody who's been a little disappointed and a little sad about that, that there actually 
is gonna be a passion 2021 this year come on what i mean can i say that right now is that I think allowed you can. i don't even know if that's like public or anything it might just be like just out today but um <laughs> hey everybody good news uh we are going to be hosting passion 2021 on new year's eve what <laughs> yes, we started this year, the first minute of this year, we were praising God, and we are going to end this year, the last minute of this year, praising God. And people are going to say, oh my gosh, tell me you're going to be back in Mercedes-Benz. I'm there. Well, I think people understand that uh, COVID is kind of flipping things around again, and we're kind of on the backside of uh, this thing again. And we're not making as much progress as we want. So we are going to be hosting a global gathering, mostly online. And right. we're pumped about it. And we are not shrinking back, but we're going forward. And we just did not want the new year to turn without 18 to 25-year-olds all around the world linking in, declaring, we believe yep. even in this year that God is still good. And we that was what we were singing, Sadie, on wow. the stroke of midnight, we were singing Good Grace. Yep. And it was true then, and it's true now. And I, we have been through the year of our lives. There will never be a year like it, I bet, in all of our lives. But God has been in it, and He has brought us through it. And that's the message that I'm building my life on today. God has been in it, Amen. and He's bringing us through it. We baptized a girl, Sadie, super fast, um, a college Love student it. who plays on the tennis team at one of the schools in town. She got baptized at church two weekends ago. So that's awesome. Should be Come some uh, amens out there. <laughs> that's She's awesome. a major anxiety struggler. She will tell you that. I mean, like very, very serious, serious, critical fight against anxiety and depression. But she came to online church when Craig Rochelle was speaking in the seven series at Passion City this summer. Wow. And Craig spoke about anxiety. She never heard anybody at church talk about anxiety. She got saved that day at church online. Wow. And she got baptized in real life, not online, at church two weeks ago. One more <laughs> college go. student coming to Passion 2020, 2021, alive in Jesus. So Let's even go. in this year, uh, there's so much to celebrate. And I want, I'm happy to say that uh, Sadie and Christian Huff... <laughs> and Live Original are partnering with Passion this year, and That's together right. we are leading the charge, inviting a generation to come and to live their lives for what matters most, and that's the glory of God. So I think there might be details right now, Sadie, at passionconferences.com if yep. people want to check it out. And uh, man, I cannot wait for New Year's Day, New Year's Eve. It is going to be incredible. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. You're so right. Yep, we are so excited to be partnering with y'all. Y'all, I'll tell you, everyone out there, there is no one where else I would rather be than spending it together as a church family with passion. And if you've never been to church in your life, this is a great place to tune in because I'm telling you, there's going to be some powerful things that happen. We believe that because we've always said this, that God is not confined to our walls, whether that's our church walls, whether that's yeah. the walls of the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. God's Spirit lives within us, and it's wherever we are. It's wherever the body of people are. So we're going to be united on this night, even if we're in our own homes, either if we're in small gatherings, However this pans out or however this looks, it is going to be a powerful moment that you do not want to miss. And so go to passion.com. Calm, go any you can look at any of our Instagrams. I'm sure after this it will be shouted out because we are so excited to just get to put good news out there. And of course, the good news is obviously the gospel. Yes, it's good news we're doing passion. Yes, it's good news that we're all gonna be, you know, together in spirit, but it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is what we can't wait to end this year talking about. So Louis, I'm pumped. Let the praise go up as the walls come down. <laughs> I, I'm so excited, and I cannot wait to see what happens. Same here, Sadie, and we're pumped to have you guys walking with us on the journey. And again, I'm, I just echo what Sadie's saying. You know, good news is for everybody, and you might not consider yourself a church person or a faith person. Maybe this hasn't been the lane that you've been in before, but the good news that we're talking about is from a good God. 
and that God has a good plan for every single person. And I just want everybody to know, uh, walking away from this, A, we love you guys. Uh, I want to make sure we say happy anniversary, like all over the place <laughs> to you. you guys on the one year. <laughs> and that uh, there is good news. And thank you for opening the way, Sadie. I'm really proud of you and Christian, Shelly, and I love you guys so much. And thank you. we love uh, seeing the way God's using you. Oh, thank you. Well, we love you guys. We are so excited for the days to come. If you guys enjoyed this podcast, which I know you did because, Louie, you had so much good advice, and we just thank you so much for your wisdom. Uh, write it all down. Take it in. Don't just listen and let it go out the other ear. Actually let it fall on to good soil, but also send it to some friends and let them know Passion 2021 is happening. We want all of you guys to be there. We're so, so excited. Louie, thank you again so much. Thanks, Sadie. for some good and bad advice. All right, so we're actually sharing a mic today, so we're going to be super close. I hope that doesn't bother anyone. Super close. Um, But we're married. Okay, so let's go through this. Let's do it. First of all, thank you for sending in good and bad advice to the Well That's Good podcast Instagram and our Elo Sister app. All right, babe, does practice really make perfect? Practice makes better than no practice. Doesn't make perfect. <laughs> That's true. It doesn't make perfect, but no, I think. I mean, you look at anything with, um, you know, sports and in- people who pursue their careers. I mean, if it doesn't, if you don't put in the work, then you're not going to get the outcome that you're hoping for. But it does not make perfect. I think that that is a lie that culture and that society yeah. wants to tell us that you know, the more you try, the harder you try to get there, then you're going to achieve it. You're going to be happy. But true. Yeah. Um, I'm a perfect, big perfect does not guarantee happiness. I'm a good big believer in practice, not so much perfect. Because like even with when we talk about like me speaking, like people probably think I just walk up there and like, you know, I prepared a message, but man, I prepare that and I practice that. I go over it so many times. Yeah. But then I always say, Okay, Lord, like I give this to you because I don't want it to be perfect. Like I don't want to go there and like cookie cutter. I want like your spirit to lead me. So I don't even think perfect is like what you want it's all not the time. Yeah. 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 All right. The secret of life is to fall seven times and to get up eight times. That's really good. This is actually really funny. I was just reading Proverbs over there, and um, it was the verse where Solomon says, the righteous fall seven times and get back up, um, but pity a man. Um, it's something like that. But, like, <laughs> but it was like— You but, went in but, so but, strong. But the core is like— you know, the righteous fall seven times and, you know, we're going to have days where we stumble more than others, but, um, you know, getting back up is key and you have to, you know, have that willpower. Yeah, that's good. I that's did, really good. I did good. start that really strong. I know. I was like... I forgot the back end of that verse. We always do. We go in so strong. Like this, it's something like that. Um, but that was great. I love that advice. At yeah. first, I didn't really understand it, but now I really like it because it's even biblical. Yeah. It All right. Beautiful. When you can't find the sunshine, be the sunshine. I love that. Sounds like a Mary Poppins kind of thing. I, I, I think of Emma Jenkins, my good yeah. friend Emma Jenkins. She is the sunshine on a rainy day. You know, like we are called to be the light of the world. Of the so, world. Oh, yes, that. we are. We should be the sunshine when we can't find it. Yeah. You are my sunshine. You make me happy. I wanted to start singing with you, but you were so off. Because you can't match. My, can't. You can't match this falsetto, baby. <laughs> That wasn't even falsetto. Yes, that the was heck, off. That was 100% falsetto. Oh, that is funny. Okay. Move one small stone at a time. Soon you will find that you've moved a mountain. I think it's good. Yeah, I, I, I didn't hear you kind of stumble at the beginning of that. Move one small stone, stone at a time. Soon you will find that you've moved a mountain. I actually that's heard like, this one that's time. Like and, very motivationally inspiring. I don't know that this is true, but I heard this one time that like when Jesus said, like, if you have faith to move a mountain, like if you could, like if you said to this mountain, like move, then mm-hmm. it, it would like fall into the heart of sea. Yeah. At the time, like people actually would work to actually move mountains. Like they would put in the work to move a stone at a time to like move yeah. a mountain. And so like, Jesus was saying, like, if you're, if you have faith, like, if you want that to happen, like, yes, like, it can happen. Like, the discipline of that, it, it put in the work and it can happen. It's kind of what we're talking about with Louis. Louis's like, yeah, I didn't start at the Mercedes Benz Stadium, but it was like that one act of faith every day. And 
all of a sudden, I I looked at the mountain in front of me and I said, move. So it's literally exactly what we just talked about. I thought we should end it there because that was just a present wrap on the whole episode. Whoa, that's good. Also, we have some new Whoa, That's Good merch coming out, and it is legit sweatshirts. We have hats coming soon, and we even have a candle that says, Whoa, that smells good. So fun stuff coming. If you are a big fan of Whoa, That's Good podcast or you have a friend that is, that would be a great Christmas gift. Yep. I hope you guys love it. Thanks yep. for loving the podcast. I have, we love y'all. I have a great way to end this. I ended it so well, man. Listen, babe. listen, listen. You ready? Ready? Well, that's good. Thank you so much for listening to the Whoa That's Good podcast. I have so much fun doing this. I hope y'all have fun listening. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Legit City Rob and follow the podcast at Whoa That's Good Podcast. Head on over to liveoriginal.com to see when I'm in a city near you or visit Live Original blog on our online store, which carries my exclusive Words by City Rob line. Also, be sure to subscribe to my podcast and leave comments so we can hear what you're loving. Also want to give a special shout out to my audio engineer, Marcus DePaula, the whole team at United Talent Agency, and my Live Original team. You guys are awesome, and hey, so are all of you too. Thanks so much for listening.